Just mention the name, but a woman who I saw the other night on television just ripped some poor idiot apart. Megan Kelly is here, and she's doing. Come up, come up here, Megan. She ripped a guy apart. Can you believe this guy? Can you believe the energy and the stamina on this guy and his hate? I'm ready to go to sleep over there. He's got another rally to go to till tonight. Let me tell you, first of all, one of the reasons why I wanted to come here, one of the many reasons I wanted to come here. When I launched my show four years ago, we had Mark Cuban on the program. You know? Yeah. You may have seen he was in the news this week. And he started going on about how bad America's race history was and how ashamed he was of America. And that's why he was at all these protests. And he felt it was really important to stand up and speak out about human rights violations. And then it got awkward when I asked him about all the money he was taking from China. And then he dropped a bunch of F-bombs. And I thought, I really enjoy this feeling of proving Mark Cuban wrong. And so here I am at a Trump rally a strong, intelligent woman to prove Mark Cuban wrong again. I won't take up much of your time, but I do want to tell you the main reasons I am voting for Donald Trump. Number one, immigration. He mentioned it. And people like Lake and Rowley. I'll be thinking about her tomorrow all day. 22 years old, killed in Georgia, a young nursing student by an illegal. I'll be thinking about Jocelyn Nangare, 12 years old, in Texas, murdered by two Venezuelan illegals. President Trump closed the border. Kamala Harris opened it by choice. It wasn't accidental. She said it would be humane. That's what she and her boss believed. Tell it to Lake and Riley's family. There was nothing humane about it. He closed it. They opened it. It was an intentional choice, and there's no reason not to believe they won't do it again. The boys should not be in the girls' sports. The boys should not be in the girls' bathrooms. The boys should not be in the girls' locker rooms. Peyton McNabb, North Carolina sophomore in high school, slammed so hard in the face by a volleyball hit at her by a boy pretending to be a girl. She suffered traumatic brain injury and permanent paralysis. Kamala Harris looks at her and says, be kind, suck it up, and that's what's right. Why do our girls have to face brain damage in order to be kind to boys who want to invade their sports? And by the way, they are going into the women's prisons. She changed the law in California to make sure the taxpayers would pay for their sex change operations. She was not just following the law, she changed the law. President Trump will stop it. He got, he got mocked by the left for saying he would be a protector of women. He will be a protector of women, and it's why I'm voting for him. He will close the border. He will keep the boys out of girls' sports and where they don't belong. And you know what else? One more thing. He will look out for our boys, too. Our forgotten boys and our forgotten men. <laughs> guys like you. Guys like these guys. Who've got the calluses on their hands. Who work for a living. With the beards and the tats. Who maybe have a beer after work and don't want to be judged by people like Oprah and Beyonce, who will never have to face the consequences of her disastrous economic policies. These guys will. He gets it. President Trump gets it. He will not look at our boys like they're second-class citizens. And ladies out there who want a bit of girl power in this election, let me tell you something. How can you win when the sons and the husbands and the brothers and the dads you love are losing? It's not a win. We care, young women and older, 
about the lives of our children, the safety of our children. And we need not get so obsessed with what happens when they're in the womb that we forget about taking care of them once we're here and they're here and they're loved. Last point, what I don't want, what I don't think you want is the left's version of masculinity. You see that ad they did about Trump voters trying to encourage women to lie to their husbands so that they could vote for her instead of Trump? That's their version of what marriage looks like. An overbearing husband who bullies his wife into saying she voted one way as opposed to an honest, open relationship. Oh wait, I'm talking about Kamala and Doug. Okay, sorry. Where was that story in the news? Where is that story? I don't remember a single media person, not one, who sat with him, asked him about the abuse allegations against him by a successful professional attorney who has great details, who has receipts, who has witnesses. No one even asked about it. I'm not into their version of toxic masculinity or new masculinity. I prefer the old version. Them, all of you, and I prefer a president who understands how to be strong and how to fight. I hope all of you do what I did last week. Vote Trump and get 10 friends to vote Trump too. ready to win. Yeah. Oh, it is good to be here tonight with all these leaders. I thank you all so very much. I want to thank Representatives Lee, Deluzio. Let's send them back to the U.S. House of Representatives. Please send Bob Casey back to the United States Senate. And I thank everyone for being here and taking the time out of your busy lives to be here this evening. I love you back. I love you back. I love you back. All right, so Pittsburgh, this is it. Tomorrow is election day. Tomorrow is election day. And the momentum is on our side. campaign has tapped into the ambitions, the aspirations, and the dreams of the American people. And we know it is time for a new generation of leadership in America. And I am ready to offer that leadership as the next president of the United States. But we still got some work to do, because look, the race is not over, and we must finish strong. So listen, here's the thing about the hard work. We like hard work. Yeah. Hard work is good work. Yeah. Hard work is joyful work. Yeah. And make no mistake, we will win. Yeah. We will win. We will win. We will win. Because when you know what you stand for, you know what to fight for. And we have an opportunity in this election to finally turn the page on a decade of politics driven by fear and division. We are done with that. We're done. We're done. We're exhausted with it. And Pittsburgh, we are not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. We're not going back. And we are not going back because America is ready for a fresh start. And we are ready for a president who knows the true measure of a leader is not based on who you beat down, it is based on who you lift up. 
And instead of stewing over an enemies list, I will spend every day working on my to-do list. Full of priorities to improve your life. Because ours is not a fight against something. It is a fight for something. It is a fight for the future. And it is a fight for freedom. Like the fundamental freedom of a woman to make decisions about her own body and not have her government tell her what to do. And when Congress passes a bill to restore reproductive freedom nationwide, as President of the United States, I will proudly sign it into law. Proudly. Proudly. So, America, I am asking for your vote. I am asking for your vote. And here, and here is my pledge to you. As president, I pledge to seek common ground and common sense solutions to the challenges you face. I am not looking to score political points. I am looking to make progress. I pledge to listen to those who will be impacted by the decisions I make. And we are not going back. We are fighting for a democracy. We are fighting for a democracy. And in a democracy, true leadership understands that the leader listens to the experts and listens to people who disagree with them. I will listen to people who disagree with me because I do not believe that people who disagree with me are the enemy. In fact, I will give them a seat at the table. That is what real leaders do. That is what strong leaders do. And I pledge to always put country above party and self and to be a president for all Americans. So, Pittsburgh, that is my pledge to you. And to you, I ask then, who here has a plan to vote? Fantastic. Okay, so help spread the word then. Polls are open here in Pennsylvania tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. You know that. <laughs> Go to IWillVote.com for all the information you need, including where and when to vote and where to drop off your mail ballot, because we need everyone to vote Pennsylvania. You will make the difference in this election. You will make the difference. And friends, listen, we are all here together because we love our country. We love our country. And when you love something, you fight for it. And I do believe it is one of the highest forms of patriotism. I love you back. <laughs> And one of the highest forms of our love of our country is to then fight for the ideals of our country and to fight to realize the promise of America. So Pittsburgh, listen, we got one day left to get this done. So now we work to get out the vote. Let's reach out in these next 24 hours to family and friends and classmates and neighbors and coworkers. And as we do that, let us really be true to what our campaign has been about from the very start. And on that, I say, please, let us be intentional about building community. Let us be intentional about building coalitions. Because here's the thing. So much about these last several years has been about trying to make people point their fingers at each other, to have Americans point their fingers at each other to try and make people feel alone or feel small. But let us do the work as we work toward this win of building up community and coalition and reminding everyone that we have so much more in common than what separates us. 
Let that be our goal. And let us remind everyone, your vote is your voice, and your voice is your power. So one last time, Pittsburgh, I ask you, are you ready to make your voices heard? Do we believe in freedom? Do we believe in opportunity? Do we believe in the promise of America? And are we ready to fight for it? And when we fight, we win. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. God bless you.